Then goes on to uh, get into a little bit of a feud with Rick Rude. They do a series of pose down things that ultimately re- results in a scuffle. Uh, WrestleMania five is here. Bobby holds his foot. Uh, Rude gets the pin. They flip the title at SummerSlam. And then that leads to a series of matches with Andre the Giant, which Andre at that point was really a special attraction working just main events and stuff like that. So I imagine on the house shows, Warrior Andre was the top build thing. Would that be fair to say in 89? Yeah, it was. But I'll give you another little piece that's funny for you historians. If you want to go back and if you have the original footage, I have no idea if it is edited on the WWE network or not. But you go back to the first Royal Rumble that was on pay-per-view. It was in the summit in Houston, Texas, and there was a pose down that you referred to with Rick Rude and the Ultimate Warrior. And the pose down would culminate at the end with Rick Rude spraying Ultimate Warrior in the face. With tanning oil? With the baby oil. Right. And Warrior is so hyped up. And so into it and has his eyes closed and is posing. And Rude is spraying him in the oil, which Warrior's supposed to. But it takes for <laughs> Rude finally just nails him because Warrior just doesn't react to it. He's so hyped up and so into the moment that he's, he you know, he gets to sell. Yeah, yeah, he forgets what the deal is. But then moving forward, they do their thing at WrestleMania. And we moved on to Andre. And the idea at that time was Andre the Giant being one of the biggest figuratively and literally stars in the entire world, it was, let's give Warrior a rub and get him into a program with Andre. And Andre was willing to put him over every night and make the guy. So in hindsight being 2020, it wasn't the best idea the way that uh, it went about it. (laughs) <laughs> because the matches lasted about 30 seconds. It was reminiscent of the Honky Tonk Man where Andre would be in the ring, Warrior would come out with his entrance, hit the ropes, give Andre a big tackle and a big splash, one, two, three, and go around the ring with his music and be gone. If you blinked, you missed it. Now, was that, I guess, two-part question here. Is that based on Warrior's limited entering ability, or is it also taken into effect or into account the limited mobility of Andre the Giant at the time? It, not necessarily Andre's limited mobility at the time. The idea, frankly, was neither. It was, what if this guy comes in, you're facing the largest athlete in the world, and Andre the Giant, you beat him in 30 seconds. It was a way to shock people, and the idea was to really get Warrior over. Right. What happened was, is we really pissed audiences off, because we put it on in the middle of the cards, so that we could come back later on before the last match of the night and announce, and next time, right here, it will be the return, as Andre the Giant will face... The Ultimate Warrior! And that was the idea behind it. It was a way to get Warrior over. Andre didn't have to do a whole lot. And you get the return. It was a freebie, per se. But it, in my opinion, it shit the bed. Did Andre enjoy working with Warrior, or did he hate it? (laughs) It, The 30-second matches, Andre loved. Okay, so that begs itself to the follow-up question. The longer matches, because they probably didn't have exclusively 30-second matches, he wasn't a fan of? No, Andre just didn't. The Warrior was going 20 miles an hour or 55 million miles an hour, not 20. And Andre had a much slower pace, right. believe it or not. But as big as Andre was, as strong as Andre was, as mean as Andre could be, if he liked you... And he wanted to work, he could work with just about anybody. And Andre would try to get Warrior to slow down. He would try to get him to relax in the ring. And when Warrior would keep going a mile a minute and keep hitting Andre with everything he had, Andre had a way of dealing with it. And there's actually video footage of it 
If you go back and you look at some of those return matches, and I want to say it's on the Destruction of the Ultimate Warrior tape. I don't know because I never watched it. But Andre, Warrior hits the ropes, and he's coming off a mile a minute, and Andre just sticks his fist straight out and punches Warrior right smack in the middle of the face and the nose. Bobby Heenan tells the story. He's at ringside, and he does this, and Warrior's legs just go rubbery. But to Warrior's credit, he never went down. And Bobby said, he goes, oh, you could see the, the face paint crack on the Ultimate Warrior. Right. But and then from there, Warrior would hit, and you can see there's video that exists. And I wish I could tell you exactly where the hell it is to see it. But you, Warrior's jumping over Andre, and Andre's reaching up and punching him in the nuts and kicking him. And he could be an angry giant sometimes to work with. But after that... Warrior learned to slow down and to take it a little bit easier with the boss in the ring. 